we are on Tuesday the, what, 24th, is it? There's a flickering light, this uh, light activated or nighttime activated street light is in it, the transition of turning off for the day. It's cloudy, um, but it reminds me of weather going on in Florida because I have been paying attention. I have been paying attention. Sometimes words come out very quickly here on the video and I realized not all my words can be heard correctly or I, I meant to say something that sounds different on video. So anyway, oh my gosh, um, I, um, heard this term a couple years ago in relation to what we normally call hurricanes and it's cyclone. So I just realized, well, at first I thought cyclone was a term used by certain regions. Like people in Texas are more apt to use the term cyclone. And it depends on how you hear that term, whether it seems worse or better, like what's the difference between a hurricane and a tropical storm. So anyway, I was watching a uh, YouTube this morning, 11 Alive from the Miami, I think it's South Florida, I'm not sure. So I get some of the, you know, personalities mixed up, but 11 Alive is usually pretty good um, from what I gather. Um, and this guy, the weather guy who I happened to see, actually talked about cyclones being an umbrella term covering all the bases. So you have, um, you know, tropical depression, tropical storm, hurricane, and whatever other term might be used in relation to a potential hurricane falling under cyclone. So it's almost like a catchphrase, like it'll just cover everything. And because of this storm that's developed, you know, just under Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula, some people have positioned the map so that it looks like, you know, the Vatican, the mural of David with his finger touching uh, lightning. Um, is it David in the painting? But, uh, or an angelic figure supposedly touching lightning um, as if a godly action took place. Um, so that's what uh, the Yucatan Peninsula looks like with Cuba at this point in time, according to some maps that are being shown for this particular cyclone. Um, so, or really hurricane. He's just saying, you know, during this transitionary sort of questionable phase of that storm pulling through that sort of almost like a strait or a bay between these two uh, entity countries of Mexico and Yucatan Peninsula is at the tip of Mexico and then Cuba and whatever it's part of um, as it pulls through and then organizes over the Gulf um, you know I guess it's considered the Gulf of Mexico I just see it as the Gulf Coast of Florida or Texas in my mind, growing up, Mexico was further, farther over west. I needed to see it further west, but they're bringing Mexico right in, up under Florida and Texas in a more clear way than maybe I grew up with, with geography, learning geography. I keep forgetting that it's all tucked over around or under Texas. Uh, but anyway, because Yucatan Peninsula comes way under, so it's like, there's a lot of ocean there between, <laughs> so, uh, but in my mind, I still had Yucatan Peninsula further west than Texas, so. But anyway, point being, it smells like a diner here, which it shouldn't, because it's Illy Cafe, um, or Bottega. It's really Bottega, so it's, you know, a cutesy sort of cafe here. coffee brand. Of course, it's here in Philly, and Philly's been known to be nicknamed Illy or Philadelphia and stuff like that. So I don't know who actually came up with Illy, but it seems like Philly. And Philly's a little Illy, you know what I mean? Like it's the idea of, you know, inner cities and stuff like that. Uh, so anyway, Cyclone covers all the bases. I can't recall ever hearing the term Cyclone until about, until a couple years ago after the pandemic. So I'm kind of curious how many people actually use that term and I just didn't know it because I didn't see the weather. It didn't concern me. I've usually been up here other than a couple, two and a half years in Florida. Um, although it does concern me on some level. I, you know, I have uh, an aunt down there who I, you know, I um, talk to every once in a blue moon. This is on my dad's side. And, uh, and then a step sibling in her family. 
so I think about them and care about them as a people, you know, but you know, everybody has their own lives and people went off in different directions for various reasons. But I do wonder about them uh, just because this cyclone, tropical depression, tropical <laughs> winter storm, hurricane, whatever you want to call it at this point in time, um, I guess, you know, seems to be heading once again for the Gulf Coast of Florida and again, similar regions, um, Tampa Bay area, which is technically their area, Palmetto, Bradenton, Sarasota, um, and then points north, and then towards the Panhandle. So the eastern side, which they call the dirty side, apparently, of the storm, at least for this one, uh, would be, you know, kind of whacking against, you know, Bra Tampa, Bradenton, and so forth and so on, Sarasota, uh, Palmetto, all that. So, uh, you know, I know, at least my stepsister, you know, she lives in a pretty sturdy home as far as I can tell and recall. Um, not too many worries there. They're not like sunken into the ground as far as I, I kind of remember a sloping up. So it's always good to buy a home that's slightly sloped up if you're at sea level. Um, so, okay. So a long time ago, I did a special Christmas meetup and <laughs> Um, there they are. I know them from 2011, kind of. It's like I, you know, I know who they are, but um, it's not like, you know, we became like big time friends or anything. One of the couple there works for SAP or SAP. <laughs> uh, this is actually a huge employer uh, in the software world. I kind of forget exactly what they do. So um, I'll have to look into them for like corporate communication, so, you know, whatever. So. <laughs> anyway, but my aunt on the other side, which happens, you know, she's also the aunt of my sister biologically, um, and then by marriage she would be, you know, in the aunt role for my step-siblings and stuff like that. Um, she, uh, you know, lives in a dwelling that's not as secure, it should be fine. Like, I think because of where it's positioned, it could be far enough inland, it's, you know, storm surge, at least by the coast, isn't an issue. No one lives, like, right on the water or anything, or, um, but, you know, I have wondered. You never know where certain things kind of strike or whatever, so it's like, uh, here we go, you know. Because the latest predictions are, um, sorry, there's a, it's a trash day, I forgot. You know, I do and don't remember when trash day is, but for this, quadrant of the city on 17th Street. Everybody put out their trash last night for today's pickup, you know. So anyway, latest projections and all the spaghetti models and this, that, and the other say that um, it could develop into a Cat 3 potentially. I think they're, you know, just taking precaution, make sure, precautions to make sure people prepare properly or hightail it out of there or whatever. <laughs> I can't, I, you know, they've been kind of lucky down there, I think. Hurricanes haven't presented a major issue for many, many years, oddly, at least where I know people live. I also have a distant cousin and his family in Gainesville. They barely have to worry about, it's very, you know, dead center, north central Florida. So it's more landlocked than anything else. You'd have to drive out to the coast. Um, 